Hey guys, welcome back. I sold a gaming PC recently to somebody who's bought multiple PCs for me in the past. He asked me if I would do a bit of a deal for him. He had a couple old laptops he was trying to sell and he was wondering if you'd do a partial trade. So I got these three laptops for the equivalent of about $150 on the trade. And I know pretty much nothing about them besides the fact that he couldn't sell them, I guess. They're all supposed to be working. He said the keyboard on one of them is a little funny. I also recently had a buddy of mine reach out to me and say, hey, do you have any old, you know, laptops that can run Windows 10? He wants it for use around his shop for tuning software when he's tuning cars, and you don't need very powerful specs to do that. I'm gonna see if we can find a laptop for him in this pile and probably just clean it out, repaste it, reinstall Windows, and uh, make sure it has an SSD in it so it's nice and snappy for him. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. So this first laptop here, this is a Samsung with a Core i5 according to the sticker on it. And this is the one that has the intermittent working keyboard. So I don't know that I want to give that to him because I want it to be, you know, just like a reliable computer for him. So I may take this apart later and figure out what's going on with it. it just says 900X on the back for a model number. It has a Windows 8 sticker, so I assume that this is an older model. Next up we have, there's an HP and an Acer. This Acer says it has a one terabyte hard drive, DDR4 memory, an AMD A9-9420. I don't know a ton about old AMD CPUs, but if it's not Ryzen, I'm assuming this is an older laptop, but it is DDR4, which is a good sign. And this HP, well, that's never a good sign. I guess we'll uh, have to open this one up and see what's rattling around inside there before we power it on. Hmm. All these screws are a little bit corroded and oxidized in the back. And also I'm noticing this one USB port is quite rusty. So I don't know, I'm sure this could tell a story. Oh, this one is a uh, Ryzen 3. So assuming this one works, that's at least a somewhat newer laptop. So let's open this up and figure out what the rusty USB port rattly noise laptop has to say about itself. Always gotta wonder if someone's already been in these. Who knows? I'm also just kind of guessing at the opening procedure here. Hmm. Doesn't want to come off. <laughs> Doesn't want to come off without a fight. Definitely something up in this corner holding it here. I think I might see what's going on here. I think they put screws under these rubber feet. Why? Yep. There's a screw right there. Yep. Look at that. You know what? I'm going to peel these off. Oh, look at all the screws. Holy moly. Love it. I'm sure these will just stick right back on. Never fall off. Great design. All right. Let's see where we get now. All right. We're in. Looks like the head of a screw. Definitely metal, so probably not a good thing to be rattling around inside here. Yeah, that's it. All that noise was just from that one little piece. We can get a better look at that rusty USB. Obviously has seen some liquid at some point and just the inside of the laptop in general. So I just grabbed another old parts laptop here that died <laughs> actually when I was trying to make a video on something, but uh, you'll see that in the future because I'm still doing the video idea, but it had a 120 gig SSD in it. So I just grabbed this Samsung 840 Evo 120 gig SSD from this dead laptop. We'll throw that in here. I just repasted the CPU. I'm not sure, I, I forgot to film, so I'm not sure if you saw that. We just used some GD900, repasted the CPU. I'm just gonna go give this a quick blowout, get all the dust out outside, and then we'll put it back together and put Windows 10 on it. Surprisingly, there was not really any dust in this. It was pretty clean, but I blew it all out. We have our SSD in there. I think we'll just toss it back together quick. Now I got my Windows 10, can pop it in here. I'm gonna stand on the other side. What do you think boot menu? F10? F10 is BIOS. F8? Ah, I'll Google it. Never mind, it's came right up. Okay, fire this all in. 
So this laptop, just as an aside, uh, it's up and running here in Windows 10 now. I'm just installing updates and stuff. And the max temperature on the CPU, it's a Ryzen 3 2200U, just pinned at 100%, sitting at 70.4 degrees Celsius as a max. So this thing is running really well. Just as a side note, the temperatures I was just talking about on the HP laptop were after I had opened it up, cleaned it out, and reapplied thermal paste. And the temperatures I'm about to talk about on this Acer laptop are before I've opened it up. The reason being, I was concerned about the rattling noise inside the HP laptop being something metal and potentially shorting it out. So I opened it up first. I just flipped around here so you can see kind of like what I'm experiencing a little bit. But this one here, it's on a hard drive, so it's just incredibly slow. Max temperature we've seen so far is 86, just kind of doing some basic browsing stuff here. CPU is trying hard to do something. I've already hit 95. Still can't hear a fan in this. Just interesting. We'll see after we repaste it if that number goes down. Okay. This battery's a little puffy, which is not a good sign. All right, well, let's do what we came in here to do. Let's repaste this CPU. Well, that's a nasty fan. Maybe that's why it has no cooling. Not much air getting through that one. I had to use a toothbrush and actual soap to get that off, but we got there. And uh, yeah, this fan needs a good once over as well. Okay, so we've repasted our CPU. This is all blown out. We can put our cover back on. Now, all I have for another SSD right now is this 240 gig Kingfast SSD, which is very crappy. Probably get 120 gig off Amazon, like a brand name one, like a Kingston or something inexpensive. But for now, because this is very easy to access, I can just put this in here for now. Just swap it out easily later when I get a little bit better quality SSD. Okay, I'll get Windows installed on this one. Okay, so apparently the battery doesn't work in this one, as I just found out the hard way. And how's this one doing? Okay, it's now a few days later. I have these laptops all cleaned up nicely. The software's all installed on them. They're both running Windows 10. And I thought it would just be kind of fun to quickly at the end of this video compare some performance between them as I don't really have a point of reference for what a 2200U is compared to a A9 whatever this is because I just don't have a lot of experience with some of these mobile chips. So for test number one, not really a performance test, but it's just gonna be the one-handed open. <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> neither is great. Maybe the Acer has a, a slight advantage because it's got a bit of a longer deck, so I think it just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so for test number two and our first performance test, we're just gonna see startup times. I'll also note that I have both these laptops plugged in for two reasons. One, they get their best performance when they're plugged into the wall, as when they run on battery power, they go into like a reduced power mode. Oh, we're already on desktop here. And two, this uh, Acer's battery is just dead. If I unplug this power cord, it'll shut off like... And there we go, we're both on the desktop. So slight advantage goes to the HP, um, but both startup times are pretty reasonable. So for test number three, we have some Cinebench R15. I've chose R15 because I didn't want to be here all day with R23 or a newer release where the image is a lot harder to render. So here we go, three, two, one, go. Now this Ryzen 3 2200U is coming up as a two core, four thread at two and a half gigahertz, whereas this one's coming up the A9 9420. It's coming up as a two core, two thread so I guess it would be reasonable to assume that this should finish in half the time of this one. So it looks like we got a 323 on this system for score. And this one's still chugging away. Okay, and we finally have a result from this guy. Uh, we scored 134. So less than half the score of this guy. So now what I thought might be fun, 
for a little visual side by side, I've added my Asus ROG Flow X13. This is like a crazy OP laptop compared to these guys, but uh, this one here is sitting at eight cores and 16 threads. So we're looking at four times the cores and threads of our best performer over here before factoring in IPC increase because this is a much newer processor. I'm even going to give the Flow X13 a bit of a handicap and I'm going to start it late because I only got two hands. Here we go. Three, two, one. And it's done. Uh, it came in here with a 2026. And it's saying that that's crushing a 12 core, 24 thread Intel Xeon uh, X5650, which is an old CPU. This is an old release of Cinebench, but uh, still super interesting to see. Actually, I thought while these are still running, I'd quickly look at some temperatures. Looks like the max we've seen on the HP is about 56.5 degrees on the core. And the max we've seen on the Acer is we're sitting at 67 C. So HP also has a leg up on cooling. What the heck? This motherboard's called a Squirtle. So for test number four, uh, we're just here on just the internet speed test. You can find this on just Googling speed test. I'm going to run these one at a time because otherwise they're both going to hit my Wi-Fi router. And I just want to see if these are older or newer Wi-Fi antennas in these. So it looks like on the Acer, we're getting 100 and 135 megabits per second and 13.9 upload. That's pretty much as fast as my internet is. I don't have crazy fast internet here. I think I pay for like 150 megabits per second. And for the HP, about the same. So they must both be using a relatively decent Wi-Fi antenna. And for test number five, I just realized that these both have dedicated GPUs in them to some description, these AMD Radeon GPUs. This is a Vega 3 and this is an R5. Let's do the OpenGL render in Cinebench and just see what that does. Okay, OpenGL in three, two, one, go. Okay, I left the room for a second and I didn't even get to see the results, but uh, apparently this one won at 28.9 FPS versus this one's 18.6 FPS. So yeah, that's about it for this one, guys. Both laptops were on regular spinning hard drives when I got them. I put SSDs in them. They're snappy, perfectly usable for an everyday laptop now. And for, well, if you take the trade-in value of $150 and divide it by three across these two, plus I still have this one, don't forget the Samsung laptop that the keyboard doesn't always work in it. Paid about 50 bucks a laptop, so I really can't go wrong. I already have one of these sold to a buddy of mine. So I think he's gonna get the little bit faster, a little bit kind of nicer one with the dedicated trackpad buttons. One of the main issues I ran into when using this one is the trackpad is awful. It's wiggly, I'm not sure if you can hear this. Like that, I'm not actually clicking it. That's just rattled and not a nice trackpad. Whereas this one doesn't click. It's a, like a stationary trackpad and it's got the dedicated buttons. So this trackpad just feels a lot nicer. The other thing too is as far as my buddy goes for using the laptop, if he wants to like hold it and like work on a car, doesn't have to be plugged in. The battery still works. It has, what was it? 89% life. That's pretty good. Whereas this one, battery's completely shot in it. All right, guys, so that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, then please drop me a like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and if you haven't already seen one of these other videos, YouTube is recommending you something that it thinks that you might wanna watch from my channel. So click on that video, enjoy, and I will see you soon in the next one.